Hi you guys, it's Karen with Love Your Land. And I wanted to do a quick seed saving video to show those of you out there who don't know how to save seed, how easy it is. I know there's a lot of you out there that do know how, um, but I'm here to tell you that there are a ton of people who do not know how to save seed. And just like with anything else, if nobody ever shows you, you may never know and you may never try it. Um, so, and this is actually kind of a, a cool thing for me personally because I'm gonna be saving the seed from this Toma tomato thing that grew. If you saw that video uh, a few videos back, I was growing tomatillos outside and over the summer. And, uh, but they were right next to my tomatoes and they cross-pollinated. So instead of getting tomatillos, I, I actually did get some tomatillos on the plant, but I also got these things. And they just kind of are like tomatoes, but I'm telling you, this is like the most delicious tomato thing I've ever grown. So I'm gonna save the seeds from it, um, but keep in mind that what's happened here is this has essentially become a hybrid. So I thought this was a good time too to kind of uh, quickly explain the simple difference between hybrid and heirloom. Um, because it can be confusing if you are new to gardening um, or nobody's ever explained it to you. So heirloom seeds, all that means is that they're true to form from beginning to, to end, basically. So the, the moment that a, let's say, heirloom Roma tomato made its debut on earth, the, the genetic structure of that tomato plant is the same now as it was then. Could have been 200 years ago, it could have been six years ago. So it's, heirloom simply means that the genetics have stayed the same and that plant produces a consistent variety. A hybrid, on the other hand, whether intentional, an, an intentional hybrid or an unintentional hybrid, all that means is that two or more plants were bred together. So an intentional hybrid situation is where they're taking the best of the best with the best of the best and uh, breeding them together and creating the superior tomato, let's say, or it could be anything, a cucumber uh, or a flower. An unintentional hybrid situation is this. So I, I didn't know this was gonna happen, like I said, but bees jumped around from plant to plant and spread the love, basically, kind of made things a little messy out there. And so I ended up with, instead of this, um, that flower that this came out of, instead of it producing a true tomatillo, it got pollen from a tomato, and here we have this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save the seeds. Um, and so that is the simple explanation, by the way, of heirloom versus um, hybrid. Hybrid is not a bad thing. It does not mean GMO, by the way. That's a popular misconception. It just simply means that it was crossbred. So I'm gonna save the seeds from this uh, thing, <laughs> and I'm gonna show you how I save seed. There's a couple of different, few different ways to save seed, but this is the most convenient way for me. It's the one that I prefer. Um, but one of three things is gonna happen with the seeds from this particular fruit. When I start my seeds in the end of December, beginning of January in my grow room, like I said, one of three things is gonna happen. And this is in no particular order of likelihood. It's just, we don't know what's gonna happen yet. Uh, the first possibility is that I'm going to start the seeds as I normally do and nothing is ever going to happen. It's just gonna be like dirt. They're never gonna germinate. Entirely possible. It's kind of, that's one sort of downside with hybrid seeds is that they often mean they're kind of a one-shot deal. Um, the second possibility is that I'm going to start the seeds they're gonna germinate and they're going to make these, whatever these are. The third possibility is that I'm gonna start the seeds, they're gonna germinate, but they're gonna revert back to their parent genes and I'm gonna end up growing tom uh, tomatillo plants again. So any of those possibilities, any of the outcomes are fine with me, I don't care. I just wanna see what's gonna happen. So anyway, enough said on that topic. Um, so let's, uh, let's save some seeds, okay? The first thing to know about saving seeds is that you wanna take the seeds from your best fruits. Makes sense, right? So you don't wanna take the fruits from a, let's say a tomato that ripened weirdly or um, seemed diseased in some way. You wanna pick the healthiest, biggest, best tasting fruit and save your seeds from that. So all you do is, depending on what type of tomato, in this case, that you're saving, you're gonna to wanna to cut it. It doesn't really matter which way you cut it, but a rom, a, 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 what's it called? Paste tomato. I usually cut those down the middle and open them up and then get the seeds out that way. This is not a paste tomato, so it's, I don't even know if it's a tomato. Um, so the seeds are gonna be all kind of over the, all over the place. Some just fell out, so I'm just gonna grab those, put them in my 
in my glass here without cutting myself. Throw those in there. And then I'm gonna take this tomato. You can still eat this after you're done. Don't worry that you're wasting tomato, you're not. Um, just make sure your hands are clean. And get. you can go ahead and get some of that goop, it's fine. Um, the goop, actually, if you don't know this, the goop, as it were, is that's what keeps the seeds from germinating when they're in the plant. So that's what that's for. Then you open it up some more, find some more little seed pockets. Ooh, there's a, a large seed pocket area. I know I'm kind of doing this backwards, but you're getting the idea. You just kind of push them out with your hand, get the seeds. I'm demolishing this tomato. This isn't precisely how I would do this, but this is a very ripe, I keep saying tomato, but whatever. This is a very ripe fruit, so it's not, um, it doesn't, it's not always as messy as this, I guess is what I'm saying. But I'm just going through it and pulling out wherever I see little pockets of seeds. A few more there. Something just fell in. Okay, so you get the idea. I could go through this some more and there'll be more in there, but this is good enough for now. So you put the seeds in there. I'll show you this up close. Okay, and now we're going to take this glass and we're going to put some water in it. Fill it up about maybe three quarters of the way with water. You're going to let this sit on your counter for maybe three or four days. Um, but you don't want bugs and things to get in there. So what I do is I take a, a little coffee filter and put it on top and take a rubber band and put that on there. The other thing I do, often I'm saving seed from uh, a bunch of different tomatoes or whatever. And so if I just had these sitting on the counter, in the end, I wouldn't know which was which. So I make sure that I go ahead and write on the top of this coffee filter what this is. So in this case, I guess we're calling this the Toma tomato. So there we go. I know I said three or four days. This has been a one week. I, I did this uh, first part of the video last Thursday and now it's Thursday again. So um, it always seems to be a week for me though and it always works out fine. So not to worry if you go past the three or four days. I wouldn't let it go past a week though. So when I take this off, you're gonna see what happens under here in that week. Okay, I may have gone a day too long because now I actually have mold. It's not gonna be a problem. Um, the, other, the, the other stuff that sort of floated at the top, that's what you want to happen. If you can see here, there's a layer of funk at the top and then there's this layer at the bottom. The layer at the bottom is gonna have your good seeds in it. Any seeds that float to the top are bad. You don't want those. So. I take a metal strainer, and I don't pour it in there yet. Um, I just start to pour off the top layer of yucky stuff. And once I get kind of some of that off and then a little bit of the water, and I'm left with just that bottom layer, now I'm gonna pour it into the strainer. Get some water on it. Actually, there's some other seeds in there. Pour those in there. <clears throat> and just start straining it through, rinsing, rinsing it out, I should say. And as you can see, all of that um, tomato goop that was in there, it just fell down into the sink through the metal mesh. And now, if you can see in there, that's all that's left are those seeds. So, let's see if I can get that on camera for you. There you go. I'm getting water on my floor. That's all right. The final step to saving your seeds is getting them out of the strainer onto a surface to dry and then storing them. Um, what I use is a, whatever this is, porcelain plate or whatever, um, to dry them on there. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. I've made the mistake in the past. The reason I point that out is that I've made the mistake in the past of using a paper towel. It seemed logical to me because it was absorbent, and it is, um, and it keeps them dry, and that's great. But the problem is then they're stuck to it. Once they dry, they're stuck to the paper towel. So I've had to pick them all off and that's just more work than I need to have in my world. So I just take a little spoon and scoop the seeds out, put them on the plate. This is gonna be so cool if these germinate into those awesome whatevers, Toma tomatoes, Toma Leah's. Is that what, what Leah out there, you, what was that name? I don't know, it was clever. She was giving me a suggestion on what I should name them. Um, so I'm, I'm getting rid of any tomato bits, which there was only one. 
and the seeds are all on here. So I just kind of space them out a little as best I can. Um, when you save seeds yourself, you'll find out that they do kind of clump together a little bit. Uh, unless you want to sit here and meticulously separate each and every one. I don't ever do that, but you certainly can. Um, so let that dry on your counter. Again, if you're doing multiple varieties of seeds that look the same, like tomatoes, uh, you're going to want to uh, get the seeds off your fingers, first of all. You're going to want to mark them. And so what I do is I take a piece of scotch tape. I do this on everything. I do this on like lunch things for my family and stuff, C uh, plastic containers that aren't see-through so you don't know what's inside, so I'll write, you know, mushrooms or whatever. Uh, and so I write on the plastic, I mean on the, I write on the tape what this is. So that's real sloppy, but it doesn't matter because I know what it says. And then I just put this plate somewhere, again, where it's going to be undisturbed uh, for a few days until they're dry. And once you've done that and it's been about a week, put them in a uh, uh, what is this called? Sandwich bag? I don't know. Put them in a plastic baggie, a Ziploc type bag. Label them. Make sure you put the year. And oh, these are my striped Roman. I wrote the best. <laughs> See, I really do love these. And what I do is I take all of my um, plastic bags, all my seed packets, and I put them in this um, envelope. And it doesn't need to be sealed but I just do that so it's organized. And then I put this, because this keeps light out. That's the other thing is you want to keep the light out. Um, I put this envelope in a drawer that has all of my other seeds. It has gardening books. It has all kinds of garden-related stuff, but that's what I do. You can also, um, some people say to freeze your seeds, that that extends their life, um, or put them in the refrigerator, that that extends their life. You can do that too, but just make sure if you're going to be putting them in the fridge where they're like constantly going to be exposed to light, Put them in a, some kind of envelope that's not going to um, let the light in as much. Anyway, give it a try. Try it yourself at home. It's, it's totally fun, and it is a cool thing, too, if you have kids, and show, you, know, you can show your kids the life cycle of, of a piece of fruit. Um, I know the tomato season, at least in these uh, northern parts, is pretty much over, but even if you have one, one good one left, and this is, this is a pretty good one, uh, one tomato left, slice it open, and before you dice it up and throw it in your salad, get those seeds out of there, put it in a glass of water, put your little coffee filter on with the rubber band, wait three or four days, or if you're like me, a week, um, and strain them through, dry them on a plate, and store them. Again, it's free food. So thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.